I started to feel my heart pounding. I'm like, holy sh**. I am standing behind that door in a sprinter's stance with my hands shaking like this. And in walks like two of the biggest humans I've ever seen in my life. I can barely walk. But oh well. Suck it up, buttercup. Let's go. It's been five days since the six YouTubers from all across the globe have been living together and competing against each other in various self-defense challenges. Throughout this time, they had moments of triumph and defeat, humor and disappointment. And although during these challenges they were rivals, they all agreed that after the championship is over, they will be coming out of this as greater friends. It feels like walking into a room full of friends that I never even knew were my friends. Yet before that happens, they were still set to face each other one last time in the final final challenge that will pit them directly against each other. This is tough, because like, I've grown to like you guys. What's so hard is it like, I don't want to see you sad, but you want to win, but I really want to see you guys sad. <laughs> The final challenge will have the contenders fight each other in all-out fights for 20 seconds each time. They will be facing each other off three times in three different environments, learning who they will fight against at the last moment just before the fight. And if one contender will dominate the fight or win it via submission or knockout, they will receive three points for each win, presenting a possibility for a single contender to earn nine points in total by winning all three fights, potentially changing everything. Yet if the fight will be judged a draw, both contenders will receive two points, while no points will be received for a loss. And once this challenge is over, we will finally learn who has become the ultimate self-defense champion. Schmack. Ah. You know where he's from? No. Come on. I don't. He knows where he's from. He, he might not actually. He might yeah. not be old yeah. enough. Do you know what I'm talking about? He has no idea. Unfortunately, as the time for the final challenge came, the contenders learned that Matt will not be able to join it, as he had an emergency to take care of in his personal life, finalizing Matt's score as it is right now. Yet the contenders soon learned that there will be two new fighters who will join this challenge. In walks like two of the biggest humans I've ever seen in my life. And then I started to feel my heart pounding. Oh. Holy sh <laughs> what the heck is happening? And then I look at Mike and I tell him, Mike, I finally realize how you feel with me. When they walked in the room, I pulled some self-defense, some magic, if you will. And I walk up to him and start chatting to him. I'm like, hey, what are you up to? At this point, if they're going to be big, mean, and hit me hard, I was going to make them like me. So this way, if they were going to do it, they were going to feel bad about it. And then the discussion if Ramsey Dewey should join the final challenge due to his injury came about. If you're injured, if the smart decision is not to, then that's cool. You make the call. I'm too injured to compete at this point. I'm out. I can't do it. As Ramsey dropped out, his total score was also finalized, leading four contenders and two additional fighters to fight each other. And once who fights who was chosen by drawing out ballots, the final details were revealed to the contenders. Goran's had about six Muay Thai fights, and this is Hala, who was Australian wrestling champion probably about four or five years ago. Mike is petrified. The other thing too is you don't need your glove. We're fighting in the old Bruce Lee, Carly Weapons gloves as well, just for the sake of your fingers. It's almost like you're wearing 10 ounce boxing gloves, but you can grapple somewhat with it. First one that we're taking you to is there's two doors, half will be in that half, half will be in that half. You don't know who you fight. I'll come in and go, you're up, you're up. When you hear the whistle, you come out those doors, you just go straight in, you've got 20 seconds to do as much as you can. The reason for this challenge of going all out for 20 seconds is to show that usually in self-defense when fighting at maximum intensity, the fight does not look like a professional fight, but instead, even experienced martial artists end up looking like brawlers due to adrenaline and the chaos of the situation. Just like pre-conference MMA brawls don't look like professional fights either. And under these difficult circumstances, we will be seeing who still does the best by causing the most damage to potentially end the fight. I am standing behind that door in a sprinter's stance with my hand shaking like this. I step through the door, I run towards apparently set, and I see a fist flying towards me and bam! I was going to open the door, sprint around the corner, and smash whoever was there. It was Rokas. I'm not doing that great. My strategy did not work out. I'm like, it's time to go down. How are we? Do you like us? Yeah. 
Since Seth did more damage and dominated the fight longer, he receives three points, temporarily putting him in the lead. The sophisticated plan to minimize the damage didn't give much fruit. Seth's plan to just go all out worked so much better. I'm like, I'm gonna do this next. But before I could find out if my new plan will work better, Icy Mike and Jeff Jan still had to find out if they were going to fight each other or one of the two other fighters in this round. What was your reaction to Big S? Believe it or not, I was kind of relieved because I thought I wouldn't have to fight Sensei Seth. Did you choose them over Sensei Seth? For some reason, I kind of was. I thought it was going to be the big guy, and I said, I'm going to come out and I'm going to throw my right hand as hard. I'm just going to go straight at him. Well, apparently on the other side, Jeff Chan's probably thinking the same thing. I create a little bit of space to hit the up kick. The up kick's been my only thing that's been working for me this whole week against these monsters. That fight, given a long enough timeline, I'm sure he beats me. In those 20 seconds, I feel like it's fairly close. And then, since your MCG was out of the fights, due to his experience as an MMA referee and judge, he was invited to help judge the fights. I thought it was pretty close. I would almost score that a draw. Really? Boy. Those up kicks were pretty good. On the ground, he landed more shots. Jeff had a dominant position. But shots from the bottom, there's like no weight behind that. But Jeff went head first into the wall. The takedown was good, but he didn't lift him up and slam him. I'm sort of thinking it's a draw, but we'll see what Aaron thinks. It was close. I said it was a draw. too. One good thing from the bottom is it just the upkick. Everything else was total domination from the top, so I don't know how this could be considered a draw. I'm holding my position. Not yet, that's okay. Unfortunately for Mike, eventually the second judge was swayed by Ramsey's opinion, and Jeff Chan received three points for the win, bringing him back into the first position. And then for the ending of the first round, the two additional fighters were set to fight each other. It turns out the additional fighters were a trick to raise the stress and adrenaline levels of the contenders. I did this just to mess with people's heads, just to try and make everyone scared. Those two guys aren't fighting anymore. That was just what a fuck. That was f your head. Jeff. I wanted that intimidation, throw a curveball, someone that you're not familiar with. Hey, you, hey, you are a f guy. Listen, you exploited my friendship. <laughs> <laughs> Gloves up, thinking I'm gonna have to, I thought I'd fight you later. Luckily for the contenders, they won't be needing to fight the additional fighters, yet they still had two more fights with each other. This was the door, and yeah. I'm in the dressing room. I saw Rookies go. That was going At, for a clinch, and then and as soon as I saw your head snap back, I said that was Seth. Soon enough, it was revealed to us that the next fight will take place on a bridge. The same one they're doing the zombie apocalypse challenge Sensei Seth described as. This right here is really sketchy. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> but this time, we're going to know who our opponents were. And Seth was going to fight Icy Mike, while I was going to fight Jeff Chan. And the two of us were going to fight first. I know I'm gonna have to fight Jeff Chan. Professional MMA king fighter. I know he's amazing, but I have the size weight advantage, and I thought I'm gonna have the aggression advantage. But I also know he loves double leg takedowns. So I'm not gonna jump on him. This time there was actually space and I could actually see and kind of sort of plan. So I went to fake a takedown. Go. Instead of running into him, I stopped. So I fainted, he didn't react to it. Went for the one-two, he dodged him. Oh, that's my opportunity. Wham, I connect with him. I get a few shots on him. You were gravitating me punches. I had to grapple you. I decide I'm gonna throw him over my shoulder. But he posts. When you got up, I have a reaction to exit punch. I give Jeff the slight edge, ever so slight, yeah, because he landed some good shots. Unconventionally, sort of reverse it, but then Jeff regained that position. So we go, Jeff. Although the fight was not one sided, Jeff Chan had the upper hand, scoring him yet another three points and pushing him further in the lead. That last punch probably would have disconnected me if not the helmet. I feel it. Jeff is so precise, even in like a 
Tough chaotic situation. <laughs> and next up, since his Seth was set to face Icy Mike. I'm doing kata before we start to mess with him, but I just see him like this, standing like he's like Troy. <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess that's lame. It's a f***ed up thing, a fight with a friend. I don't want to fight him, but then that f***ed him up. Everyone ready? Yep. Let's go. We clinch up. He kicks me in the balls. I registered that he kicked me down there. I didn't feel anything. I expected a head kick or the competitive streak, and we've been talking about landing head kicks on people. And now it was time to find out who won the fight. Mike, that was a solid knee to the nuts. Yeah. The whole event, I, I needed to be more aggressive. I needed to flip that switch, and I did, and I was slow to start. But the judges weren't as convinced about Mike's loss. And since they couldn't come to a consensus, all the contenders were invited to assess Mike's fight against Seth. I thought it was very easy. Yeah. That kick, he obviously pulled it. That's the danger yeah. point. Right. The kick is they get caught all the time. Yeah. You more or less say that that was a takedown. I know granted if you follow through, it would be different. The groin kick was You're on the groin. That's not a fact that we're one of those schools in Arkansas. To the groin kick. <laughs> but it was actually Ramsey that brought it up. He pulled the yeah. kick to the head, I pulled the kick to the groin. At the end of the fight, they said Seth was on top and was feeding punches. If that went 10 seconds longer, could have done a lot of damage, then the groin shot does play a big role. It's so You know what? I'd be happy to follow the draw. Who thinks Seth won? Like, honestly, who thinks Seth won? Who Whoa. thinks Mike won? He thinks it was a draw. No, 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 for the draw, both Mike and Seth get two points. Which brings us to a fascinating situation, where if in the following round Seth will win his fight and Jeff will lose his, Sensei Seth will become the ultimate self-defense champion by getting ahead with a single point. In this round, all the competitors will once again fight a randomly chosen opponent, and they will find out who it will be at the very last moment once the hoods will be taken off, while the environment will be a lounge. And I was going to fight my final opponent first. All I'm thinking about is like, as soon as they're gonna take off the hood, I'm just gonna jump wherever that is, and I'm just gonna strike them. Blindfold to come off in a moment. You're Jeff telling. As soon as I'm gonna lift off the hood, and I'm like, God, I'm tuned in, I'm ready. Blindfold off. Wait, 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 wait. Three seconds. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Rokas cheated. Turns out what Jeff said was. Then you have about three seconds, and we'll say go. I did not hear that whatsoever. Luckily, Mike accepted it as an honest mistake, and in a moment, we were ready to go again. I thought that Rokas might duck and shoot, not try the same thing twice. So I tried to do a flying knee. I was hoping you would duck your face into it. I'm feeling terrible. I'm thinking, okay, I'm gonna let him strike first. Two, one, go. He just sort of hung back, and it sort of grazed off his chest. That was it for Mike and I, leaving Mike with a final score of 20 points and the 4th place, and me with 26 points and the 3rd place. The fact is that when the vote was there who's gonna win, I was last, and pretty significantly last. And deep inside I thought, I'm gonna prove everyone wrong. I've been working so hard for the past few years, I've been training my ass off, going to classes 6 and even more times per week. I know all the other guys have more experience than I do, but I also know that I can show stuff as well. And I realized I got the 3rd spot. Me, I guess technically fourth place it hurts and it's rough and knowing your limitations is important too that could be considered a form of self-defense i know where i'm at the cool thing about this though is all the fights are so nuts it wasn't like anyone got owned even the fights where somebody won other dude was in there so i feel so happy about my performance i'm my own belt i don't need that belt and now it was time to find out who will become the ultimate self-defense champion the whole purpose of the mask was that you didn't know who you were fighting. Before we take off the mask, I say, you got five seconds? I can hear Jeff go, yeah. <laughs> Jeff knew it was me off the jump. Go, go. So my just reaction was to shoot for the double. He sprawled really quickly. I'm going to win. Go. 
I found success in grabbing people, running them into something. And I'm going, bomb, bomb. Oh my God, there's only 20 seconds. I think I'm gonna lose this. And all of a sudden, I feel like my arm is like, it's kind of like in something. But I know that there can't be much time left. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and then it gets to the point that I can't take it anymore. I, on his leg, go tap, tap. Beep, 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 beep. Oh. 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 Good job, man. Thanks, brother. You I lost. Like, I lost a whole thing. I'm about to start crying right now. I lost a whole thing right then in one, like, in a fight that I felt like I was winning. <laughs> I'm obviously happy and proud, but at the same time, if there is any change in the rules, things could have been significantly different. I've grown such a bond with you guys. Like, I'm sad to go home. I love my life, but I'm sad to go home. I'm gonna miss you guys for sure. I'm also sad that I didn't win. This self-defense tournament needs to happen again with a different set of participants. I think it was really cool. It's very wholesome, everyone coming together. It's really cool to take someone who is like a professional fighter and just put them in environments that everyone fantasizes about seeing them in and actually seeing it play out. This is the first time that anything like this has happened. Now that we know it can be done, I'm interested to see what you do next. Doesn't Jeff have to defend his belt? I'm coming for you. We were walking back from the store. <laughs> he's running around, he's like, Edgy Rokas. And there were kangaroos. And I was like, hey guys, we're just passing through. And he's like, f you, you better run, kangaroos. <laughs> and he's like, Edgy Rokas. <laughs> you had too much pizza too late. You can't feed Rokas past a certain hour. <laughs>